a life for the 21st century. When darkness invades the world and appears to obscure God's action in history, Divine Providence always raises up providential men or women who, like beams of light, illuminate souls with their lives, their virtues, and their teachings. Truly, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Thus, on August 15, 1939, a new ray of light shone on the earth that would reach beyond the 20th century and would penetrate the new millennium, manifesting the splendors of the Blessed Virgin to mankind. João Scognamirio Cladias From his earliest childhood, the young João felt an enormous attraction for the universe of the stars. Sitting at a window ledge in his Ipiranga neighborhood home in Sao Paulo, he used to contemplate in wonder the beauty and order of the starry firmament and to ponder the grandeur of their creator. Besides these nightly meditations, he experienced certain supernatural phenomena, such as the daily apparition of two souls from purgatory, and an exceptional grace received at his first encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist, when he was only six years old. Such incidents helped him to early comprehend that reality is incomparably richer and deeper than the material world that our senses grasp. From his early youth, however, João became aware of the lamentable state of society in his time. He saw that human relations were dominated by egoism, immorality pervaded every place, drawing souls to a life of sin and atheism led many to deny the truths of the faith as, for example, the existence of hell. Seeing that what reigned in the world was the contrary of the wonders that Our Lady had sown in his soul during childhood, the youth was deeply distressed. He began to pray incessantly to find a man who might reverse the world situation and be disposed to fight for the Holy Church. Every night, amid tears, João begged Mary Most Holy for the grace to meet him. And in the silence of his bedroom, a mysterious silhouette began to take shape before his eyes. It was the man he awaited who would change the face of the earth. Through providential ways, Our Lady led her Son to the One, who from then on would be the light of His footsteps and the meaning for His existence. Plinio Correa de Oliveira This encounter would become the central milestone of His life, for the young João would draw from Dr. Plinio a wholehearted love for the Eucharist, a filial devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Later taken to the point of consecrating himself to her as a slave, an unconditional fidelity to the Church, and the wisdom needed to promote the defeat of evil and the triumph of good. João became the torch that emanated enthusiasm within the work founded by Dr. Prínio. 
leading all toward the realization of the quests and goals he discerned in the heart of his spiritual father. Having served in the army, he nurtured a keen appreciation for the order of military life, finding in the alliance between discipline and piety an indispensable element for the formation of Dr. Prinho's young disciples. Thus, within Dr. Prinho's movement, João began to encourage a life of discipline united to a life of piety. Convinced that our Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Mother reign within well-ordered souls, and eager to thus implant the reign of Mary in the inmost souls of those who were taking their first steps in community and religious life under His direction. During a period of 40 years, João enjoyed close and daily conviviality with Dr. Prinho, receiving his teachings and absorbing his spirituality. After the death of Dr. Prinho, many disciples discerned in João the same grace and spirit that animated their common master and father. and began to follow him in new enterprises, carried out in keeping with the desires that Toto Prino had manifested in life, but had never been able to realize. Thus, João founded the private association of the faithful, Heralds of the Gospel, which was approved by Pope John Paul II on February 22, 2001. With time, seeing the growth of the work and feeling the need to promote a more intense sacramental life among his spiritual sons and daughters, he decided to form in the very bosom of the heralds of the gospel a clerical branch especially dedicated to assisting its members. Thus, on June 15, 2005, the first 15 priests were ordained, among them João himself. Nevertheless, the desire to glorify his spiritual father and accomplish everything to which he had aspired led Father João to steer his boat into deeper waters. On September 14, 2008, Pope Benedict XVI nominated Father João Honorary Canon of the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome and Apostolic Protonotary. And in the following year, the same pontiff granted approval to the two societies of apostolic life founded by him, the clerical society Virgo Flos Carmeli and the feminine society Regina Virginum. Amid sufferings, hopes and successes, the years pass and the work of Monsignor João bears fruit and develops increasingly throughout the world. We believe that men and women of the 21st century will find, in his words and in his life, the necessary lights to discern the will of God, 
and thus proclaim with the angels and saints the final triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary on earth.